This is the Heath Kit model HW8. About a year and a half ago, I bought uh, several of these, actually, probably six or seven, uh, one at a time, of course, on eBay. Uh, they were relatively cheap. They weren't working. Each one had a, 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 a separate problem, a special problem. And so I bought them, and um, they're really easy to work on, very easy. They were simple fixes. It was anything from uh, they needed to be aligned. Um, this particular radio here, which I decided to keep, um, this one actually um, had a bad crystal, uh, 80 meter crystal, and uh, needed to be aligned. And um, I can't really remember. I think I put a new power transformer in it, a po power transistor in it. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to run through. I hadn't seen anything on on um, YouTube about Heathkit HW8s, and so I thought this would be a good opportunity for me to kind of tell you about them. Uh, to start with, if you're looking for a really good QRP radio that's going to reach out there and get those stations for you, this is absolutely not the one. It's, uh, it's a nostalgia radio now. It, in its day, it was probably considered to be fairly a uh, fairly good radio. It's a home-built that came in a kit form. And um, it puts out this particular model, uh, this particular radio, um, despite what the books say, I haven't seen any that put out more than about 3 watts. This one doesn't even do that. This is probably about 2 watts. I think on 80 meters it's less than 1 watt, um, depending on what frequency you're on. It covers uh, 80, 40, 20, and 15 meters. It's a CW radio. It has no built-in speaker, so you'll have to either use a headset or, as I'm gonna, when I turn it on, I'll show you. I've hooked it up to a little amplifier where I can run it through a speaker to let you hear what it sounds like. But um, the first one I bought, I bought it to keep actually and uh, I plugged it in or hooked it to the power supply turned it on, I didn't hear anything and I thought this thing is dead this radio is dead and then I realized there's no speaker uh, it, these were built I guess in the 70's um, this is before the uh, uh, modern day uh, circuit boards and things like that so there's a lot of wiring in them but like I said once you open one up and I'll show you the inside of one here shortly I've got one that, that was built by somebody who probably should never have touched a soldering iron, and it was just a mess, so I ended up using it for parts. Surprisingly, I got all my money back plus just by selling some of the parts in it. Um, a lot of the parts in there, the resistors, of course, and capacitors and things like that are e easily uh, available, and are easily acquired, I should say. They're available. Um, things like the, the uh, wire-wound inductors, and uh, switches and things like that are pretty hard to come by unless you find somebody parting a radio out. The prices on eBay have skyrocketed. I was buying these for anywhere from forty to fifty dollars, getting them working and selling them for about one hundred and twenty, hundred and thirty. I did sell one to for one hundred and eighty, uh, just the way eBay goes. But now they're starting over a hundred dollars, and they're not even guaranteed to work. So I got out of that business. There was no more money in it for me. I did keep this one because I like the receiver on it. And I have made a lot of contacts on it. But uh, I don't use it for contesting or anything like that because it's just... Not only is it low, very low power, I mean, that's not a problem. You can do milliwatt contesting. But the problem is it's, um, it's just it's design. It's just not designed anywhere near like today's radios. But let me turn it on and I'll show you what it sounds like. And then I'll open it up and let you have a look inside. There are no filters in this radio or um, noise blankers or anything. Well, there, I'm sorry, there is a filter. It goes from wide to narrow. And it's, uh, it sounds like I'm having a little trouble with that filter. Um, band is pretty, in, in, uh, Anyway, uh, this, obviously this radio needs to be cleaned. I haven't used it in quite a while, and I need to get in there clean the switches and uh, some things like that. But it, like I said, it covers four basic bands, CW only, um, a very limited, primitive kind of a radio. 
But if you're looking for a suit, you happen to pick one up, get one on eBay at the right price, and it's not working, they're very easy to work on. Um, chances of a part being bad that's hard to get is uh, not that great. You can still pick up crystals and things like that from people who are parting them out. This is a radio that I parted out. Uh, the fellow who built this, it just had all kinds of problems. There were solder bridges, um, wires going to the wrong places, and uh, I really didn't want to fool with it. I, it would, would have taken a, basically to take everything out and, and start from scratch and build it again, and I just didn't want to fool with it. It wasn't worth it to me, so I parted it out. I sold all the, uh, the inductors. Oh, I sold the, I uh, took the crystals out. I have those. I saved those. Um, still got the power transistor in it, which you can buy those on eBay. You can buy a package of them for a few bucks. So, like I said, nothing's really um, that hard to come by. If you see anything in this radio, if you're looking at this video and you see anything left in this parts radio that you need, go ahead and contact me and we'll work something out. I, um, you know, I'm not going to keep it. The VFO has a plate missing. This uh, uh, and so that's probably not worth anything to anybody. But there's some switches left in it, uh, the pre-selector, things like that. Anyway, what it has is basically it has it has um, loading when you're going to transmit on it, which I'm not going to do today. I don't want to set it all up to transmit and have to put a tuner on it and all that. But it does transmit, like I said, at very low wattage. Uh, the selectivity up here is wide and narrow. The filter. And it's really not that great. Um, I know there are some people out there that probably really think a lot of these radios, and I don't mean to start an argument with anybody, but in my estimation, they're not that great. I have a FT817, a K1, and a K2, and uh, as far as QRP radios, they're light years ahead of this. And in fact, they are light years ahead of it. They are, this, was a, this is a granddaddy. Over here, you have your uh, pre-selector for, for the receiver and then your AF gain and your RF gain here. Basic on and off switch. And um, you'll find a lot of these have been modified greatly. There's all kinds of stuff on the internet. If you happen to get one, you can get everything you need on the internet uh, as for free. Don't buy any manuals. Don't buy any the documentation on these radios. People will try to sell it to you. Don't buy it. It's free. If you once again, if you can't find what you need, contact me. I probably have most of it in my computer. I'll send you copies. It's free. I hate to see these people get on there and they sell stuff for 10 bucks to people and all they did was copy it off the internet and then repackage it and sell it. So you can get all the documentation you want. There's tons of stuff about modifying these radios for higher power. Um, problem is once you modify them, the value goes way down because like everything else now, the nostalgia craze People want them in pristine condition. This is not pristine as far as scratches. It's got some scratches, but it uh, it hasn't been modified at all. It's a straight radio. I don't intend to sell this one, but if I did, I'd probably ask about $150 for it after I clean those switches and get the static out of it. So other than that, uh, I hope this helps you a little bit. If you're deciding to buy one of these, or just for the interest uh, of seeing one, um, I can't think of anything else. I've enjoyed working on them. If you want to get into repairing radios, uh, this is a good, great place to start because they are basically easy to work on, um, and you can learn a lot. The, the drawings, I, I just get on the internet and look for HW8 um, schematics, and they're everywhere. They're real simple to follow. They're just very, very basic. Um, the radio that's underneath it, as you see this radio right here, this is a, a Kenwood um, TS520. I've got two of these I bought on eBay that aren't working. And this one here, uh, I turned on this morning, it wasn't receiving. I've had these about a year, and I didn't fool with them. This is the first time I took it out to see if I could figure out what's wrong with it. And I'm going to do a video on it, but it wasn't receiving. I got that working, and now I'm working on the uh, transmitter. I found some problems in there that I think are pretty obvious, and I'll show those in the video when I, when I make one of it. So anyway, uh, I hope that you, um, I hope this has helped you some. They're not a bad little radio as long as you keep in mind what they are. And uh, don't expect them to be what they're not. See you next time.